Hey beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. My name is Busisu Lamine Khaudi, the K-Path principal. Today, um, what we are going to do in this video, we're going to go through different um, calculation questions that um, we usually find in an exam. So we'll do them together. We might not do all of them, but we'll do some and I will try that as time goes on to incorporate even more and more and more as I get time. So let's get to it. So the first question that we will do, it's a multiple choice question. So I will make sure that I put up the questions here and then we'll do the calculation so that you can see how we got to the answer. So in the first question, it says you want to make 370 mils of a one in 50 dilution of urine in water. How much diluent would you require? So here you are given the total volume, you are given the dilution that you need to do, but the question only wants what the diluent. So at the end of the day, you need to be able to give in a diluent result. So in this case, like I said, you're already given a dilution. So it means your dilution is a one in 50. And then as always, we know that with the dilution statement, the top part will represent your solute and your bottom part will represent your total volume. So now we have that. And then now they say the total volume of the dilution that you are going to make, you must end up having 370 mils. So if we were going to represent it in a tube form, so it means your total if this is the end of your solution that you're making, your total must be 370 mils. So now, since well you have the total volume, and as well, we know that when you express a dilution statement, it will always be over a total volume. So what you need to do now, you can use a ratio and proportion because you have two similar things. So you can put them together to be able to solve your answer. So what we are going to do now, you're going to have your 1 in 50, whereas your solute for this final dilution that you are making, you don't know. But you do know the total volume, which is 370 mils. So now once you have expressed it like this as a ratio and proportion, now you can solve for x. So to solve for x, you're going to cross multiply. Then you're going to have 50x. And then on the other side, you are going to have 1 times 370, which is going to give you 370. 17. So to solve for x, we are going to divide by 50 so that 50 can cancel 50 and we'll be left with x. But now with mathematics, what you do on the left hand side, you must do on the right hand side. So to get your x, it means you're going to say 370 divide by 50, which is going to give you 7.4 mils. But then it doesn't end here because what you are calculating is the solute and the question wants you to get the diluent that you will use. But what it's nice is that because you know the total volume, you also know your solute volume. Now what you are left with is to determine that part. So to do that, you will say my total volume minus my solute will give you me my diluent. So the total volume is 370 milliliters minus 7.4 milliliters, which gives you two, uh, 362, comma, 6 mils. So this is your final answer. So now going back, to our um, question, which was a multiple choice question, then it means we are going to choose option B, where we say we're going to use 7.4 mils of urine. So this is your solute. And then in this case, it will be urine. So you're going to use 7.4 mils of urine. Then you will dilute it with 362.6 mils. So your answer for this question is B. 
Now let's do another question. The laboratory instrument's limit of linearity for a test is 170 millimoles per liter. The result you obtain is 190 millimoles. So now you decide to prepare a dilution using 50 mils of serum and 100 mils of physiological saline. The result of the diluted serum is 65 millimoles per liter. And then the final result should be reported as, and then they give you options. So we need to um, calculate here. So they are saying you are using 50 mils of serum and 100 mils of saline. And then they are giving you that the result that you got from this solution is equals to 65 millimoles per liter. So that's the concentration you got after mixing these two um, substances together. So after you've diluted your sample. So now it means to be able to find a final result, you need to calculate the dilution factor. So to calculate the dilution factor, as we know always, a dilution is expressed as a solute over the total volume. So then in this case, our solute, which is serum, because we were diluting serum, it is 50 milliliters over. So now your diluent, that was saline, you used 100 mils. But now we can't put it in this expression because the expression says it must be a total volume. So it means you're going to add your 100 and the 150 and the 50, then it's going to give you 150 millimoles per liter. And to get a dilution factor, you have to simplify this. So you say 50 into 50, it goes once. And then 50 into 150 goes three times. So now once you have your dilution statement, it means your dilution factor is three. So once you have the dilution factor now, you can be able to calculate the final result that will be reported. So which is going to be 65 multiplied by three, which is going to give you 195 millimoles per liter so it is the final result that will be reported of this patient it will be 195 so in choosing our um options there it means we're gonna choose option a then it is our answer question that i want us to tackle is this one it says you are required to decontaminate your workbench in the laboratory. Show all your calculations and indicate how you will prepare 300 ml of a 70% ethanol solution. So we use ethanol to de uh, decontaminate our benches, but when we buy it, we buy it as a concentrated um, liquid. So now, you, sorry, we need to make a 70% um, concentration that you can be able to decontaminate with because you can't use 100%. So they are saying now you need to prepare a specific volume. So you can't just prepare because you have to prepare the volume that will be enough for your lab probably for the day if you prepare daily or for your week and so on if that is possible. So the final volume is 300 mil. And the concentration that you have to prepare is a 70%. So to go on with you, we know that the 70% is the same as 70 over 100. And then like I, we said always, this is your total volume. And this is your solid. So since well, they gave you that on your the, uh, solution that you are going to prepare, it must have a total volume of 300 mils. So it means in this case, these two things are the same. So you can use ratio and proportion as well. And then solve for X to determine how much of methanol must you use to make a 70% alcohol with a total volume of 300 mils.
So what you are going to do now, you're going to cross multiply. Then you're going to have 100x is equals to 70 times 300, which is 21,000. So let me just write it as 21,000. And then now we want to solve for x. So it means we're going to divide by 100 so that 100 can cancel 100. And we'll end up with an x. And then what you do on the left-hand side, you must do on the right-hand side. And you end up with 100, 210 milliliters. So now with these 210 milliliters, it is your solute or is the amount of the concentrated methanol you are going to measure but then this is a volume over volume expression so there's no dissolving here so it means to be able to prepare this solution we must still calculate the diluent so now you're gonna go to your total volume it's 300 minus 210 so it means my diluent is 90 milliliters so the question says, show all your calculations and indicate how you would prepare. So by just calculating, you have you are not done answering the question. So now to answer the questions, because your calculations have aided you to determine the, uh, the volumes. So you're going to say, I will use... milliliters of methanol and mix it with 90 milliliters of distilled water to make a 70% methanol solution. Then a continuous professional development CPD article in a medical journal mentions a urea value of 28.25 milligrams per deciliter. You require this value to be expressed in millimoles per liter. Indicate how you would convert this urea value and report the value in millimoles per liter. And the molecular weight of urea is 60.06. So the first thing that you need to do with this question is, I have milligrams per liter. Now I have to go to millimoles per, per liter. So you need to think of which formula has both grams per liter or milligrams per liter and millimoles as well. So in this case, the first thing is to determine that formula. And the formula that can come to mind it is the molarity formula. which says molarity is equal to grams per liter over molecular weight. And you have your urea value as 28,25 milligrams per deciliter. So even though we have this, we can't just substitute this into the formula because the formula wants grams per liter so it means now before you can be able to use this formula yes it's taking us into the right direction but before we can use it it means we need to convert our value our unit to grams per liter so that we can be able to substitute it into this formula so to do that So this is the same as um, complex conversions. So the first thing what you need to do is to simplify them. Like that. So 28 is the, this is the same as that. And then now you're going to deal with each um, section separately. So we're going to start with the top. So now we want to move from milligrams to grams. So to move from milligrams to grams, like I will always say that we always think positively. So zero minus three, you are still left with what? With three. So we are moving from a lower unit to an upper unit. So it means we need to divide. 
So we're gonna divide by 10 to the power three. Like I always say, we always think positively. This is gonna make our life easier. So we're not gonna consider that minus. And then you go to the bottom, you have your deciliter, and you want to go to liters. So to move from your deci to liters, you are still going up because deci is a, a small unit and liter is a bigger one. So you're going to move from deci to liter, you divide. And then when you divide, so deci is 10 to the minus 1 and then liter is 10 to the power 0. So, sorry, that's 1. So 1 minus 0 gives you 1. So you're going to divide by 10 to the power 1. And then you're going to solve your... Um, you're using your calculator so the top part you're gonna have 0, 0,028 grams divided by 0, 0,1 then now you're gonna simplify that your final answer becomes 0, 0,28 grams per liter so now because we have grams per liter it will be easier to substitute into our formula so to calculate molarity so molarity is always more so per liter. Ne? Going back to the definition, if you watched the previous videos, so it's going to be 0 0,28 grams per liter divided by 60,06, which is the molecular weight of urea. That was given to us. And then when you punch that into the calculator, you are left with 0 0,05. I think it's two zero zero five moles ne, per liter. But now your question was straightforward that you wanted to go to millimoles per liter. Yes, you are almost there. So now it means you must convert these moles to millimoles. So to do that, still you follow the same rule of conversions. So it's zero comma zero zero five moles over so the bottom part we are not changing because it's in the unit that we want but we want to change the the top part so it means it's going to be a moles you are going to melee so you're going to multiply by 10 to the power 3 because moles is 0 and then mills is 10 to the power minus 3 then it means your final answer is 5 milli moles per liter because 0 0.05 times 10 to the power 3 is equal to 5 then this is your final answer that it's your urea result so thank you so much for joining me this is where i want to end for today and like i promised i will try to find other more questions to do so that um you can be able to practice and get your way around to the calculations Thank you so much. Until next time. Bye.